Conference USA Media Days continue Frisco, Texas. We now turn our attention to Middle Tennessee. Last year they lost a heartbreaker in the conference championship game, but they've got their sights set on another repeat, hopefully this year. And joining us, their head coach, Rick Stock, though. Rick, good to have you with us today, buddy. Glad to be here. We'll talk to you in a second. Malik Manseal also will be joining us. Defensive tackle, honorable mention, Conference USA last season. Good to have you here today. Be here. And Khalil Brooks, second team all conference USA last year, this year, preseason all conference USA. Um, not to bring up bad memories, but you, you go ahead and you beat UAB, the regular season finale, then you lose the heartbreak. How long before you got over it, and did you ever look at the championship game tape? Yeah, well, first of all, Ron, I was really pr- proud of our team last year. It was a, it was a really special group of men, uh, proud of what we accomplished, disappointed we couldn't finish it out, but really really proud of our team. And, and uh you got to give UAB credit. They beat us, and, and yes, I did watch the film. Uh, you try to study and learn from it and everything. So, But it was a, it was a tough deal, and uh, I don't know if you ever really get over it. There's times right. I still uh, you know, flash back and think about it. So, But, uh, you know, again, just proud of our team, you know, for getting there. And now this year, hopefully, that we can get back and then close the deal out. Well, uh, knowing coaches over the years, they hurt for the players more than they hurt for themselves. Right. And that was special last year because you probably hurt for your son, who was the starting quarterback. Yeah, you know, it, I, I, and you're right, Ron. I hurt for that whole team. And that, the, the post-game deal, that, w- that was hard on me because I knew how much our team put into that season, right. put into that year, you know, from the back in January when we started. So, uh you know, I wanted them to taste, you know, that that feeling, mm-hmm. that championship feeling, and and I felt like I let them down because we couldn't we couldn't win it. So that was emotional. That was hard because, you know, the how much respect and love you have for your team. Let's talk about your program because the one thing that has stood out in the years I've known you, consistency. Your team is always right there. That's something you have to be proud of. Yeah, I am proud because, especially Ron, when you look at the power five teams that we have, we play every year, you know, we're playing three every year, you know, where other teams in the conference, you know, some are playing one, some are playing two, some are playing none. So to do what we've done on a consistency basis, you know, every year uh, with who we've had to play outside of this conference is, is very satisfying to me. Um, you know, we just finished the best four-year run in the history mm-hmm. of our school. So I'm proud of the former players and our current players. Well, this season is not going to be easy. He mentioned the non-conference, so I'll bring it up. We'll get it out of the way. <laughs> Michigan, three weeks later, go to Iowa in between Tennessee State and Duke. That is tough. But yeah. <laughs> let's talk about what you've got coming back because I think you've got a very a big group of talented, skilled players coming back. Do the quarterbacks who are coming in now have to utilize that? Yeah, uh, you know, obviously we're we're going to have a new quarter, new quarterback this year, and, and I think especially early, you know, our players around him offensively and our defense, you know, we they've got to play really well, right. and uh, you know, till you know whoever the quarterback is can you know establish himself because whoever it is, none of them have really played much of Division One college football, so. There's going to be, you know, some highs and lows there with them. But I like our team. I like our defense. I like our offense. And then I think a big part of our success this year is going to be in the kicking game, you know, how we play on special teams. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to this season getting started and, and developing this team. Give us an update, though, on the quarterback situation right now. You know, we, we've got, uh, you know, two quarterbacks, Chase Cunningham and Asher O'Hare, that went through spring practice. And Asher played last year. As, Asher played a half, that half right. uh, uh, FIU, and that's all he played. And then uh, Chase came in and kind of mopped up games you know, at the end, and then Randall Johnson is a junior college quarterback we signed, but he didn't get here until June, Okay. you know, so he didn't go through spring practice, so, you know, you you got a pretty good idea about Chase and uh, and Asher, and, uh, 
not so good an idea, you know, exactly what you got with Randall because he wasn't here. So all three of those guys will compete this, this August, and we'll go as long as we need to go until somebody separates themselves. Well, Middle Tennessee has also had a history of great receivers. You look at Richie James. Now you've got Ty Lee, who could pass Richie James. Tell us about Ty. Yeah, Ty, you know, is – you know, started as a true freshman and has been very consistent. And as a, you know, he he's similar in some ways to Richie, but uh, I, you know, Richie's probably faster, uh, probably a little bit more elusive than what what Ty is. But Ty's got great quickness. He's got great ball skills. Uh, he's a tough kid. He's competitive. He understands defensives now. Uh, he understands our offense is, and has done a really good job. Is very consistent and and if he can stay healthy, then he'll end up being the you know Middle Tennessee's all time leading receiver. Is the biggest question going to be on the offensive line? Because what made your son Brent so good, he got rid of the ball quickly, and the offensive line didn't have to hold their blocks right. long. But do you think the question right now is getting that offensive line to adapt to a new quarterback? A little bit, maybe, Ron. I, I like. I like our. We lost some good players in the offensive line last year to graduation, but I like who we we've got coming back. You know, they just haven't played much, mm-hmm. but I think they're they're really good players. And if they can stay healthy, uh, I think we've got a chance to be as good up front as we've been in a long time. Let's talk about your defense because they forced the most turnovers in Conference USA last season. Scott Schaefer's squad has six starters back. They also intercepted 16 passes. You've got to be pretty pleased with what the direction the defense is going. Yeah, you know, Coach Schaefer and our defensive coaches have done a great job, but the credit goes to our players. And, you know, in 2017, we only created, I think it was 11 turnovers. Exactly. And, uh, you know, so last year we, you know, we more than doubled it, and we emphasized it, our players emphasized it, and did a great job, you know. Uh, of, and to me – Creating turnovers really starts with effort, how hard you play. You know, you're chasing down balls, and, you know, it's, it's not the first guy that, you know, that recovers the fumble. It's maybe the guy that creates it, and then here's a guy, Khalil or Malik or somebody coming behind it with playing with great effort, recovers it. And we did a good job of catching interceptions. Mm-hmm. We dropped a lot of interceptions in 17. So uh, it, it, I like our defense. I like how – the mindset that we play with, the toughness that we play with, and, you know, that credit goes to those players. Uh, Reed Blankenship is uh, one of the DBs you're talking about, preseason conference USA. I think he's one of two safeties you have on this team that can play on the next level. Yeah, I I really like where we're at on the back end. You know, we've got two safeties that have proven themselves in Reed and Javante Moffitt. Those guys are are really smart players. They're dependable players. They're good open field tacklers, and they both have good ball skills. Uh, you know, so they're 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 the quarter. They're the leaders on the that back end and do a great job. So you have a great comfort level as a coach. You know, at your safety position. Well, let's talk to some of the players. A couple of defensive players. Khalil, I'm going to start with you first. Second team conference USA. 14 and a half tackles for a loss yes, you, last year. You averaged 77 snaps a game. You don't like coming out, do you? No, sir. I, I believe that great players play all game, and um, I just always try to do that. How disappointing was the title game, and how long did it take for you to get over it and say, okay, um, my career is not over. I still got more to do. Um, immediately the next day. Uh, mentally, it was out of my mind, but physically it was still there. Um, but um, I just knew that. Uh, I have one more year to play, and we can come back and get this title. Okay, you forced it. We talked about a lot of turnovers last year. Is that kind of a target for you again this season? Because your defense played outstanding last last year. It's always the target to get more turnovers. Um, also, all 11 guys want to get to the ball every play. And uh, we believe getting the ball back to the offense because the more times we get the ball back to the offense, the more times we have an opportunity to score. Do you like the way they've changed the targeting rule that now it has to be decided by replay? Um, yes in a sense because we will make sure the game is safer for the players on, on the offense and defense side of the ball. And also joining us defensive tackle, honorable mention, All-Conference USA last year, Malik Mansell. He won the Ironman winner for Middle Tennessee. Your goals for this season? Uh, just to win, go go back to the uh, Conference USA championship for as a team and win. And for my personal goal, uh, double-digit sacks. How tough was it last year, though, to lose that title game? Uh, it hurt, man. Uh, that res- uh, that set with us 
for a while, you know what I'm saying, uh, just getting over it and watching the film and going back over it. It hurt to lose that way, but like you said, uh, we got some more time, so we got over it and ready are, to. Are you going to be the defensive lineman that's going to be a bit feared pass rusher because every team's got to have – that one guy is that something that you see yourself putting yourself in a position to do yeah that's something i want to do this year uh be a dominant and try to change the game for us and then give a moment you guys are awesome man two defensive players i like it everybody else brings offense we get a little we get the slobber knocker guys here today i like it coach i want to talk about your schedule once again we talk about you open the season at michigan how do you prepare once you come back to camp for people to get used to playing in that type of atmosphere? Well, it's going to be tough. Um, you know, we'll, we'll practice in, in August there towards game week, closer to game week and preparing for the noise. You know, we'll have – it doesn't really affect us that much offensively because we're so hand signaled right. the plays and everything now. Uh, the communication, there's not a lot of communication with the quarterback up front and all that. Everything's signaled in. So we'll handle that, but we'll, uh, you know, we'll do some crowd noise at, at mm -hmm. practice to, to prepare our guys for that. But, you know, we just, uh, we'll, we'll have a great mindset going up there. Two things I've been asking all the coaches here at Conference USA Media Days. Number one, let's talk about the targeting rule. Now they're going to use the replay. We touched on it briefly. I think that's outstanding because I think there have been guys that have been tossed from games or having to sit out the first half of the next game that have been unfairly targeted. I, I agree with you. And, uh, you know, like Khalil said, we, we need to do as coaches, as, as uh, rule makers, uh, people involved in this game, we've got to do whatever it takes to make the game safer. And uh, we're doing that. <clears throat> but you also, at the same time, you want to make sure you're getting the call right. right. And uh, it's these guys put too much time and effort into playing the game to be disqualified for the wrong reason. Right. And, you know, if they target, if it's, you know, a violent target, you know, a legitimate target, then they should be disqualified. But I like it, you know, where we're reviewing it and uh, there's there's no intent. The intent wasn't there, and he didn't lead with the crown of his helmet and everything. So I think it's good for college football. Transfer portal. <clears throat> like it? Don't like it. Parts of it I like. You know, I think it's, uh, you know, it gives a player an opportunity if he's not happy, uh, if he's not playing, it gives them an opportunity to explore their options and maybe go somewhere else where they can be happy and, and play. The thing I don't like about it is just the inconsistency on is he going to be immediately right. eligible or not. You know, so there's too much gray area in that sense to me uh, that, you know, you take this kid, but he's not eligible. Somebody else takes this kid, and he's eligible. So that part of it I don't understand and I don't really like. But as far as you know, giving these players an opportunity if they're not happy or they think they can play somewhere else, you know, I'm all for that. Now, we have had some coaches that really know attire, and they are quite the flamboyant dressers. You win. <laughs> you win. You got the white kicks on, which is good. Look, look you know, maybe Cole Hans, not sure. Yeah, they are. You're, 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 I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go to the outlet today and pick those up when this thing's over. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I, got a little, I may be old, but I got a little bit of swag. Right <laughs> I have neither. Don't I? I got a little <laughs> bit of swag. Does he, he always, but he always comes he this always way. Doc Holliday told me to tell you that oh. you're the best dressed guy. Is that right, Doc? Best dressed guy. And, well, Doc should know because he's the oldest coach here. So <laughs> he, he, he should know. Oh, the gauntlet has been thrown down, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And, and quick update on your son, Brent, because we, we all fell in love with him. Not, not so much, well, of course, his on, on field, what, what he did. But off the field, your son was yeah. a very special player. Yeah, he's doing great. Um, you know, he had a couple tryouts, NFL, and that thing didn't work out. And he's uh, ready to <clears> pursue <throat> his coaching career, so – He's got some things going on there, and hopefully maybe the end of the next week he'll, he'll find some place to land. But he's doing good. He's going to be a, in this profession. He'll do a great job. I agree 100%. Give him our best. Always one of our favorite people. Coach, Appreciate good to you, see Ron. you again. Thank you, babe. Gentlemen, thank you so much. When we come back, we'll look at the final team from the East, Bobby Wilder and ODU, and we return right after this.